Hey folks, welcome back. Hope you had a great uh, week and weekend flying a World of Warplanes. I hadn't had much time to play as much as I would like, but uh, I've dove in a little bit and uh, took on the task of helping out uh, one of our newest players in the player base who wanted to uh, kind of flight up and uh, see some of the ropes. So you see Godwin down there in his XFL1. He had one of these uh, from uh, earlier days. He's a new pilot in the game, but uh, this was the one that he was learning off of. And, and honestly, Tier 5 is not a bad place to begin learning because you've got rolls, you've got bombers finally, right? That kind of thing. So I've taught him the first lesson, of course, which is splitting up. So he's going to handle the airfield. I'm going to take the mining plant. And I've decided to do that because there's a possibility of running into the other team, which, as you saw just a second ago, included a specialized BF-109E. And uh, if you have not seen what those can do in the hands of a good pilot, go watch my last video, and you'll see Nova racking up a 24,000 personal point game with it. So I didn't want him to have to deal with that right off the bat. So I'm going to be here. And uh, I haven't flown the XFL in forever. This was uh, one of the first premium planes I ever had. Of course, it was one of the uh, initially released as part of the welcome package when the game launched. Uh, was part of the highest package you could get. And I had a number of friends, uh, and I think Godwin may fall into this, who were World of Tanks players who bought the package because the package actually had enough gold in it that it was actually a really cheap gold, and the XFL was just sort of a bonus. And Wargaming did it on purpose to try to lure people into the game, and here we are 10 years later, and uh, it's still working a little bit. So uh, the XFL is an interesting aircraft. Uh, in terms of flight parameters, it's sort of that jack-of-all-trades, right? Sub-10-second turn time, uh, decent speed. Uh, I have mine kitted out uh, for speed uh, in the bottom corner there, which might have gotten cut off in this replay. I'll have to fix the uh, angles for you guys at a later date. But uh, I'm essentially running a full speed build on it. Um, you know, the reality is that 10, sub 10 second, even with a full speed build, you can kind of keep it down around there. And I'm still going to outturn things like this 109, uh, who, you know, uh, cardinal rule again, what are you afraid of, right? And he's got a very good plane, and but he's also low. And he also did not uh, turn and make me his number one priority. And so uh, that's going to be uh, the end of him, at least in this first pass here. And, uh, of course, uh, Godwin is over there taking care of uh, Airfield as well. And uh, we already got the mining plant. Uh, again, it is a little bit cut off this time. Must have changed settings, so I apologize for that. But uh, we are winning uh, currently the airfield and, uh, and the mining plant. And you see Godwin has already gone to the middle to help defend that. And that's the name of the game. We're out in front now, and um, we're going to just stay on top of this. And one of the things we were talking about is the XFL1 can be a little tricky. Um, even though it's a good jack-of-all-trades plane, so it's a good one to learn on, the guns are finicky. You got the 37 and you got two uh, 7.62s. And unfortunately, um, I, I was checking this, and you know the muzzle velocity of high ca heavy cannons like the 37 millimeter are not great. Um, and this one's even worse than that. We're gonna go into that in a second. But uh, as you can see, Godwin, of course, uh, already doing fairly well over the middle, uh, picking up things quickly. And this was one thing I wanted to mention. Uh, so Godwin is a new player to World of Warplanes, but he's a Unicum in World of Tanks. So uh, he is a top dog over there, 1% of the 1%, uh, a purple level player in the win eight ratings lingo. If you don't play World of Tanks, he's the best of the best. Uh, and so players like that you know, are interested in learning. They want to pick up techniques. They want to understand builds. Uh, they want to know game mechanics. Mechanics. And this was a good reminder for me and for all of us in World of Warplanes. Not everybody that walks in off the street um, is going to play for a week and then leave, right? And not all of them have zero experience with planes or games in general. A lot of times uh, they do come in with a little bit of a background that is helpful for them. And in this case, uh, Godwin took to this like a fish in water as soon as uh, he kind of got the hang of things. So just something to remember, you know, when people duck in, you know, there is a wide gamut of people. I watched a YouTube video this week, a guy who played for the first time, and it, it was a... Uh, it was really difficult for him to understand even how to fly the plane, right? And so that can be part of the difficulty there. But when pilots are you know, wanting to come in and learn the game, it behooves us as the player base uh, to kind of help them to be able to do that and to support them in it and uh, you know, not uh, stomp on them or uh, crap all over their heads or uh, say mean things, uh, just to kind of offer that support and assistance um, and uh, create a good environment and, and a good player base so that uh, uh, people feel welcome and don't feel like uh, there's you know just uh, drama spewing out everywhere in the community. So 
uh, enjoyed this. And as I said, God was a fast learner. So um, he's, he did well, progressively well as the night went on. This was one of our early battles. Uh, so anyway, uh, just a note there for everyone about the community, about the players. You know, encourage the new folks. Uh, they're a lifeblood of the game in some ways, and uh, we definitely want to, to help them out and uh, do what we can for them. Now, uh, back to the XFL one. Uh, as I said, the, the guns are finicky on it, and there is a specific reason for that. Um, and that is that the 37 millimeter has a very low muzzle velocity. So you have to pull more lead on your shots. That's a practical effect of it, right? The shells fly slower. So you have to get out in front. See, I didn't get far enough out in front of this one, and then I have to adjust as I'm pulling in, right? And there were parts of this match where I, I pulled the muzzle velocity, the lead on the plane, immediately very well. But you saw there again, you know, I, I was shooting behind the plane. The shells were not traveling fast enough, right? And uh, that takes some adjustment, especially if you haven't played this. And I thought I would be fine because of the I-250 having you know, the 37 millimeter on that, which is also a lower muzzle velocity. Uh, but I went in and checked the statistics and realized I'm still struggling with this because this 37 millimeter is the lowest velocity 37 millimeter in the game. Lower than the, the uh, Soviet 37 millimeters, lower than the German 30 millimeter stub guns that are so frustrating for people. Um, lower than all of those by a significant margin. Uh, in fact, there is the bullet speed. You can see down there is the muzzle velocity is 267. So those German 30 millimeters that you struggle to hit with sometimes, and like the Messerschmitt 262, uh, those are significantly higher than this, and they're a struggle, right? And this is even lower. And the crazy thing that I picked up on when I looked at this is I thought, well, gosh, you know, then you can't hit with your machine guns. No, the machine guns have a low muscle velocity as well. Um, and in fact, at lower tiers, the 7.62 and a lot of the biplanes and stuff, this is the muzzle velocity for it. Um, and that makes sense for the lower tiers and biplanes where you don't have a lot of speed, so you don't have to worry about leading an aircraft too much. But in the higher tiers like this, where planes are going to be moving faster, I can see where that becomes an issue quickly, not only just for the 37 millimeters, not just that you're missing 37 millimeter shots, it's you're also uh, sometimes just missing with the machine guns. And so that sustained DPS that backs up the gun is not great. Now I'm going to pause here for a second because this is a fun. We've talked about energy fighting on the channel before. Uh, so the F2A was up high and uh, chasing a plane. And uh, I've been diving in to pick up my speed. So even though we're roughly the same same altitude, I feel confident the F2A has uh, less energy than me. So I'm going to take him into the vertical and we're going to see what happens. And this is a good uh, illustration of the XFL being uh, a good jack of all trades because although I could not do this to the 109E, in that case I needed to outturn him, for the Buffalo, I can just roll over on top of him when he stalls out. And at this range, even with low velocity 37s, it ain't going to make a difference because we're so close, I can hit. So uh, that's kind of what makes this plane good, is you can adjust to uh, other tactics. And maybe good is too strong of a word. Let's not use the word good. Uh, this is a viable, <laughs> a viable plane at Tier 5, I think, is the, the word I've been going, going for at this point. Um, it's not over the top powerful, but it's also not weak either. You know, it's a good middle of the road. And so again, a, a good training plane at tier five. Um, and again, you can see kind of some of the other stats here. I've pulled these from gamemodels3d.com, which is a great source of under the hood information for you um, to kind of give you an idea about this. And you can see it's not so much uh, accuracy, dispersion angle is the, if you're familiar with tanks, again, it's the uh, amount of randomization, I guess, uh, within the crosshair that you're going to get. And then auto aim angle is how much the game compensates for your poor, poor aim. And originally, uh, that was uh, a, a different number that was split between synchronized guns and wing guns uh, because of the different displacement on them. That is no longer true. Auto aim angle is, is single gun dependent, and there's not necessarily uh, a difference between wing guns and and your nose gun, at least in terms of the auto aim angle. Now there is in terms of where the shell starts and where the shell ends, right? Um, but in terms of the game trying to help you compensate for that, it's not so much uh, under the hood anymore. But anyway, these are the two guns that are on it, um, along with their kind of relevant statistics. And you do have five seconds of overheat uh, with a 37 millimeter, and that's 
pretty decent. Um, you know, higher tiers, it gets the 37 millimeters have a lower overheat time, usually around three seconds. But this is good training for that as well. Uh, the other stat I wanted to note in here for players who don't know the history behind this is recoil dispersion. And you might think, well, we've already got dispersion angle. We've already got a randomization element. We've already got an auto aim to kind of help us get back on track. True. Recoil dispersion was the penalty uh, to your firing when a gun was overheated. So it used to be that you were double penalized. Not only did um, your sort of rate of fire ditch uh, dip when you hit uh, overheat on the guns, but also the bullets would just fly all over the place. In 2.0, all those values were set to zero. So there is no more additional um, accuracy penalty when you overheat their guns. There is only a rate of fire penalty. And so that's something to keep in mind. So if you are flying this plane, it is a good jack of all trades. You can kind of set it up however you want to. I wouldn't set it up to be a turn fighter at tier five, mainly because you're going to run into zeros quite often. Um, and you're not going to get below the zeros. And you're also not going to get below Spitfires because Spitfire 1 and 1A one are going to come out a lot at tier five as well. And you are you just don't have the capability, the base turn rate to get under them in a turn fight. Um, and so your best way of beating them is to build out your speed. Um, because no matter how high you build out your speed, you're still going to be more maneuverable than those energy fighters at tier five. Um, and you might actually be able to stay within range for another second or two uh, just to get uh, get maybe one more cannon shot on target or something like that. So I would recommend the speed build, but you can set it up any way you like it and it's comfortable for you. Uh, in this case, you know, I'm running, I think, um, polished scan uprated engine and the um, gun sight. So there you go. Okay, so um, one other thing I wanted to show you as a bonus tip uh, before we round out uh, everything here is something I shared with Godwin that I also noticed when I watched uh, the YouTube video of the new player this week uh, trying to learn the ropes from scratch. And that was uh, what you can't see on this screen, disappointingly enough, which is you know using the alternative battle interface. So there is a secondary interface if you're new and don't know this that gives you way more information than the standard interface. And you can tap the, you can hold the alt key to, to show that to you. Um, unfortunately, because it's so useful and there's so much in there that's so helpful, um, a lot of players turn it on and leave it on. And you'll notice that for me. One of the ways you can tell that it's on is if um, you can see the boxes in the bottom left corner with the guns, uh, showing you a meter for gun overheat for each gun individually, rather than just sort of the standard bar that's down there. That's one of the benefits of the alternative interface mode. Also being able to see the actual cap numbers uh, for the game up at the top, which is super useful for knowing how far ahead or behind you are. That's part of the alternative interface as well. So um, if you don't have that turned on or you want to be able to do it without, you know, just clicking the alt button, how does one do that? So here we are in the client afterwards, and uh, I'm going to show you. We're going to go to settings, which is the little uh, uh, wheels in the top corner, and then uh, click that, click, click settings. You're going to come in here to controls, and then do battle interface, and then there's alternative interface mode. And you can see here it's uh, the it's uh, set to um, hold the key by default, and I've got it set to press the key instead. So when I first come into the match, I hit the key left alt, and it just turns on the alternative interface, and I generally run with that. Um, I still kind of glad it's not the default because there are some things on the basic interface that are better which is really kind of odd but for example when in the no clouds video right i can look at the mini map and tell the direction someone is moving there's an arrow uh, the arrow tells you the direction the plane is moving in and that's not available in the alternative battle on the alternative interface you get the planes class, which is helpful, but sometimes you want to know you know, direction and you know, that sort of thing, and so you have to go back to the regular interface. So I found that tapping the Alt key is the easiest way to do that. I can just turn it back off again and then turn it back on if I need to. It does take a little bit of getting used to, especially if you're not used to a lot of keyboard controls to have that extra thumb or pinky or finger to, to switch over to the Alt key, uh, but it is incredibly helpful, and I would strongly recommend having that on, especially if you're a new, newer player to kind of give you some information. If it's overwhelming, turn it back off I get that um, but it is overall you know a, a pretty darn helpful set of information to have and I would work on learning it and getting it in the game um, and um, in your command as fast as possible so hope that was helpful for you today uh, it was a great time flighting up uh, with a newer player kind of revise that love for the game that we all have right kind of seeing things through new eyes and hearing the questions and uh, and the excitement uh, with someone and so I enjoyed that a lot 
I hope you guys, as I said, are also having a great week. Good luck if you're grinding out for the pilots. Um, I'm not a grinder. I'm not going to do marathons. I don't have the time for that. Um, and so um, I will probably spend a little bit of money and pick up one or two of the pilots that might be useful. Um, what no one has really said, which I think is a good piece of information, is the pilots are only good if you can invest into them. Um, so you're going to need to get them to at least eight, in some cases, 10 uh, points, maybe higher for them to really uh, shine. And so, you know, if you don't have time to invest in getting those extra skill points or the uh, free XP to invest in getting those extra skill points, which do get pricey, um, the more points you have under your belt, um, then, um, you know, sort of the, the less um, useful they are to you. They're not like the hero crews in World of Tanks where they have special skills, but those skills don't count as part of the progression. Uh, the skills in this game do count as part of their progression, so they take up part of your points pool and they make it harder for you to get some of those basic skills. So in that sense, they're really balanced. I don't think they offer too much of an unfair advantage to pilots who use them. Uh, because of the investment that's required um, and because of the loss of other standardized skills that are also helpful. Um, but I do think if you're someone who plays the game a lot, they're probably worth the investment, um, especially Elise and, and Millie. Uh, in particular, um, some people are, argue Mary and Akira as well. Uh, the German pilot, whose name I don't remember, is probably the least useful of the bunch. Um, but all of them are pretty interesting nonetheless. So if you do want them just for fun, go ahead and jump in and do that. I'm going to have a uh, video later this week about the P-38 Lightning that's on sale um, and heavy fighters in general at mid-tiers. I haven't flown a heavy fighter, I don't think, in this channel. Or if I did, it was I think I threw the Messerschmitt 210 once for you guys. But uh, we'll do a heavy fighter video and talk about that a little bit. Uh, questions, comments, suggestions, throw them down below. Hit the subscribe button. Come and visit us on Discord. Chat with the community. Have some fun. Uh, if you have questions, ask them there. There's pilots with certainly more skill and experience than I have um, and great perspective, and they'll be um, happy to help you out, I hope, and uh, encourage you in your game. So uh, until next time, I will see you in the skies. Good luck and good hunting.